The road to the US Open underway and the biggest tournament of the warm-up tournaments going into the US Open or the first big one. Huge results though this week in Canada. Let's go have a look at who won last week. So in the ladies final, we had Pagula getting up over Samson over 616 Love in one of the best matches Pagula's played in a long time. She's hitting peak form at the right time. And over on the men's side, Yannick Sinner wins the biggest trophy of his career, finally getting a 1,000 trophy, beating Alex Simon on the final 6461. So the first big winners of the US Open series, Sinner and Pagula, and both are at career high rankings thanks to their results. Let's go have a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week outside the top 10. Starting with Samson Over, she made the final of Canada. She's up at number 12 in the world, six spots higher than last week, which is equal to her career high. Alex Diminor, finalist on the men's side, he is up to number 12 as well, six spots higher than last week, which is a career high for him ahead of his biggest final. And Davidovich Rakina, up 14 spots to number 23 after making another semi final at a Masters 1000. So some big jumps there for some players and some career highs as well for the guys. Having a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings, and there are some dramatic changes. Simona Halep, she has gone down 520 spots to number 578 in the world after not playing in Canada where she was the champion last year. And of course, she won't be playing for the foreseeable future until we get a result on her hearing and if her provisional suspension will be still going. So she'll be unranked once the US Open is over. Carino Busta, last year's men's champion, he also didn't play. He goes down 100 spots to 124 in the world and he won't be playing anytime soon either because of his elbow. And Nick Kyrgios going down 35 spots outside the top 100 to 120 also dropping a lot of points from last year and also not playing the US Open, which means his will drop even more. So some massive drops there. Some of the biggest drops we've seen in the last 12 months of the rankings due to players not being able to compete for various reasons. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings now and no changes to the top, which Fiontek adding points to her total after making the semis in Montreal. Stays at number one with Sabalenka at number two. And the gap is now almost a thousand points between those two. So next week is going to be very interesting. Sabalenka is going to have to win Cincinnati and hope Hope Sviantec doesn't go too far. Bagula, she solidifies her spot at number three for now, winning her second Masters 1000 trophy ahead of Rabakina, who's at number four. Cincinnati for those two is going to be really crucial. Jabir comes in at number five with Garcia at number six, Goff at seven, Zachary at eight, Kvitova at nine, and Von Drusseva rounds out the top 10 for this week. But with Cincinnati coming up next week, some of those players are playing for top eight spots, so it's crucial that they have a good result next week just so they can keep their ranking or go up in the rankings before the US Open. Having with the race to finals now, and still only the two players qualified with Sabalenka and Sviantec at one and two. Rebecca is only a couple hundred points behind the cutoff line, so she could qualify if she has a good week next week, or more likely after the US Open if she has a good result. Pagula adds a lot of points to her title, which means that she will be able to qualify as well if she has a good US Open in Cincinnati over the next few weeks. Von Drusen is at number five with Jabert at number six, Goff at number seven, Kvitova at eight. We have a change on the bottom with Bencic going up to number nine and Mukova going down to number 10 to round out the top 10 for this week. And again, with a lot of points on the line next week and the US Open coming up, expect a lot more players to start qualifying for the end of year finals. Have a look at the ATB rankings now. And again, no change at the top with Alcaraz staying at number one, Djokovic staying at number two. And of course, they're battling it out for that number one spot ahead of the US Open. Medvedev stays at three, even though he made a quarterfinal in Toronto with Tsitsipas at four. We have a change in the middle. Holger Rune goes up to number five. Yannick Sinner goes up to number six, pushing Rude and Rublev down to seven and eight. And that's a career high for both those guys. So Rune, number five for the first time, and he's playing for a top four spot, as is Sinner going to the US Open. And that is crucial. So that way you don't have to play Djokovic or Alcaraz until a semifinal. So huge chance there for those guys to potentially make it into a top four that City Pass currently occupies. Fritz comes in at number nine and Tiafo rounds out the top 10, but with a thousand points on the line next week. And City Pass, by the way, does have 600 points to defend next week. His number four spot's in jeopardy. And like I said, Sinner and Runa in the best positions next week to try and take that number four spot ahead of the US Open, which means you don't have to play Alcaraz or Djokovic until a semi-final rather than a quarter-final if you're only in the top eight. Having a look at the race of the finals now and still, Alcaraz at number one and still the only player on points to qualify. Djokovic at number two, he's still qualified because of the Grand Slam rule, but would like to qualify on points and could be, by the end of Cincinnati, qualified on his points. Medvedev comes in at three, but Sinner, he goes up to number four, pushing Pass and Rublev down to number five and six after adding a thousand points to his total. Runa comes in at number seven with Rude at number eight, Fritz at number nine, and Zverev rounds out the top 10 for this week. The ATP finals are starting to take some shape and a lot of familiar names. Most of those players last year actually qualified for the finals, except for Alcaraz and Runa, who didn't play. So we're starting to get some shape there 
and some familiarity when it comes to the AW Finals race. So there you have it. The Canadian Open done and dusted. Some big results there, some big points. And of course, Cincinnati, so many points up for grabs next week. And some really crucial rankings as well, because of course, those guys are playing for that number four spot. Really, it's to avoid Alcris and, play, and Djokovic in the you know quarterfinals and play them in the semis instead. That's a big bonus. On the women's side, Pagula and uh, Rabakina are battling it out for three and four as well, which is interesting. And also in the middle, players are battling it out for their rankings and seedings for the US Open. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you this week in the rankings? Is it the fact that we have some players that are dropping way down the rankings? Hell of going down 500 spots. I mean, that is insane. They're like No one drops 500 spots in a week. It's insane. And also, Krinja Booster dropping 100 spots. That is unheard of, usually, on the tour. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest surprise for you in this week's rankings?